Today we're going to make our while loop program useful. So this program is great, the one that you have should have finished by now. It shows you four different ways to do a while loop. So you've got your definite, and you've got an indefinite that's got a target. You've got an indefinite that you just have sentinel, and you've got an indefinite where you ask each time. So your program should work, you should have your comments, everything complete, and you remember to do a loop inside your main void function. So we're going to, but this program, all it does is get a total, shows you an example of a while loop. So let's make it more useful. We're going to change this to actually getting an average of scores. We're also going to talk about different types of functions. So let's start by copying all our code. We want to keep this. This is going to be our example. So whenever you're working on a program and it says there's a definite loop, an indefinite loop, some kind of while loop, and you're not sure, you can always come back to this one. This is going to be like starting our library. So we want to keep it. So for our program, we're going to use this, but we're going to change it. So let's pop it into a new code sculptor program. And we're going to change the name. To, this is going to be the scores average program. So one of the things we're going to do is just change all the dirt, the words so that it says score. So how many scores and enter a score. And here instead of saying number of iterations, we will say number of scores. I want you to go through your whole program and anything like it. even right here, we're going to change this. So go through your program and change everything so it says scores. So now you've had a chance to go through and modify your program to say score instead of numbers. We're going to do a few more things. First of all, let's take a look at what we've got right here. You might notice I've added in a couple more print statements just as an introduction. So this is an introduction. Let's go ahead and add another helper function for our intro. Let's do a lot of modular programming. You can also see at the top of my program here, I added a comment. These are our helper functions. Let's just remember our terminology. We have our main function. So in our helper function section, let's define another function. And this is going to be our intro. You want to just copy and cut and paste your code from here and here watch your indenting go ahead and take a couple seconds and get that done you've had a chance to go and make your intro function hopefully you also added a comment and you remember to call it where you had cut and pasted now we're going to talk about functions and we're going to start using some more sophisticated functions than we used in the past all of our functions so far have pretty much been void functions. A void function gets called, it does its job, everything's done. We haven't even used parameters. But there's another kind of function that returns a value. Other than that, it works pretty much the same, but instead of printing or doing a lot of work inside, when it's finished, it's going to return a value. We kind of talk about it like it's a black box. You ask it to do a task, it does the task, returns the value. Don't really care how it does it, just that it does it. So we're going to turn our helper functions, not the intro, but all the other ones, we're going to turn them into return functions. So instead of printing the sum and the counter, let's return those values back to our main function. The main function is going to stay a void function. It doesn't return anything. But these loop functions are all going to become return functions. So I'm going to take out these two lines. I've done a sum and a counter. I simply want to return them. So I'm going to type return sum count. I'm going to do that for all of my loop functions. Now the order does make a difference because I'm returning the sum before the counter. You need to remember that when we call the function. So when you go through, and you're going to do this for your functions. Pause the video if you need to while you get all that finished. Now when I call a return function, 
it needs to be part of an assignment statement. So we see right here, I'm calling a function. This is how I call a void function. I simply call it. But now it is a return function. It's going to return values. Those values have to go somewhere. They're going to go to sum and count. So I change this statement from just a simple call to an assign. I assign the values being returned from definite loop to these two variables. I'm going to do that for all of my calls. I have, it's um, returning two values, so I assign it to two variables. Now, why would I want to do this? Because I need to use sum and counter to also calculate the average. So I would either have to calculate the average in every single function, which is really not very cost effective, or I can do it in its own function, and if I do, I need sum and counter. So main needs to have the value sum and counter. We turn them into return functions. This is great. I've been able to use them. Now I'm going to create a function to calculate the average. This is going to be another helper function, but I'm going to need to pass in the value of sum and counter. So this particular function, it's going to be a return function, and it is going to need parameters. So I'm going to call my calc average, and here we always have just parentheses that were empty. This is where our parameters go, and it's going to need sum and counter in order to do the average. And how do I find the average? I just do my sum divided by counter. Pretty simple. I'm going to return average. Now it's a return function. Let's just throw in a little comment. So other people looking at our program, they know what's happening. Okay, now since this new function is a return function, when I call it, it needs to be part of an assignment statement. So I need to give it a variable. It can be the same variable average, or it can be different, I A B G. When I call it, I'm just going to do my typical call statement. Now since this has parameters here, I need to give it arguments here. This is where sum and counter come in. Order is important. Okay. I can't switch the two or I'm going to get the wrong answer. Now I just need to print everything. So I can do print statements here. I could do another function for the print statements. And this is what we had before. So I've got three print statements for my three variables that I found. And I only have to do this once. I don't have to go into every function. This is going to be a very streamlined, um, user-friendly program. Let's go ahead and give it a try. So let's just try it with the first one. Let's type in three scores. And no errors. Let's try it with the third choice. I'm just going to enter numbers, and then when I want to click zero, and there we go. So you should be able to get this program to run with no errors, and now you've been introduced to fun uh, return functions, and also we've used parameters and arguments. Take a look at your program, see if you understand everything, write down any questions you have, and ask if there's any kind of confusion. When this program is working perfectly, you're ready to turn it in for a day. Or, for an additional challenge, why don't you go ahead and try making a function for printing. You are going to have to pass in parameters. It is going to be a void function. And then just really remember to call it, get it to work, and that will give you more practice.